cool. That was a game. All right, re-recording this. Had like a 25-minute video. I was reacting to the last like 10 minutes of the fourth quarter. But that video would take forever to process and all that stuff on YouTube. So let's just let's just get through the grades and get to the ramp. So the grades was not good. Jalen Hurts was not good. Uh, 300 yards, two touchdowns, two picks. Was also our running back one today. I guess we forgot to run the ball. Miles Sanders only had two rushes. Um, you know, is what it is, man. Jalen Hurts, what was my exact quote was, I am expecting the worst, hoping for the best. Or prepared for the worst, hoping for the best. And the worst is coming through here, man. You know, last week was not good for Jalen Hurts. This week was not good for Jalen Hurts. Last week was not good for Nick Sirianni. This week was not good for Nick Sirianni. The two weak links of the squad have been very apparent and up front for the last two weeks. Um, receivers, you know, Quez Watkins had a couple big plays, but you already know that. Quez Watkins, wide receiver one right now for the Philadelphia Eagles. Uh, sucks that we can't really see, you know, Devontae Smith a whole lot. We just don't, we can't get in the ball. There, there was people talking about a drop with Devontae Smith, and I think it was a more so... Like if I had to rank them, I'll I mean, this maybe just be just like, oh, he hates Jalen Hurts. But like, I'd be like, number one, Trayvon Diggs made a great play. He gets the game ball. He was the best player on the field tonight on either team. Was Trayvon Diggs for the Cowboys? Very impressive. I'd say number one, Trayvon Diggs made a good play. Number two, Jalen Hurts didn't throw the ball quick enough. And then number three, Devontae Smith probably still should have caught that ball. That's how I'd order everything that happened on that. But it just sucks, man. You like use all these vestments for for flashy skills and players, and this offense is doing this. It's uncreative. It's you know, you question the fact that we hired a guy that we didn't know who he was last year. Just a li little bit. Defensively, you know, it, it's bad. Josh Sweat is kind of good. Thought that the, the DBs did generally fairly well. Darius Slay, Steven Nelson, we weren't getting beat by Amari Cooper. We weren't getting beat. We didn't lose this game because of... Because, uh, you know, C.D. Lane making plays. It was the tight ends. The linebackers could not cover the tight ends. The safeties could not cover the tight ends. They could not stop the running backs. Uh, that Ep uh, Harris, Anthony Harris, is going to be the 2021 Nickel Roby Coleman. I was told this guy was really good signing of the offseason. That guy has not been impressive. I think he's another guy that... And this is just, obviously, re overreactionary because they just got smoked. But through three games, I just I haven't seen anything Harris make a play, and I think he's a guy that's just like, oh yeah, he look, must have looked good because he's playing next to you know Harrison Smith and in a Mike Zimmer defense, kind of like that with Eric Wilson to a degree. But at least with Eric Wilson, it's like, all right, we signed Eric Wilson, we got excited because he's a modern day kind of cover linebacker, not great run defender, and like so far he's getting exposed as a not great run defender. Like we already kind of knew that, but again, it's like, all right, well, it doesn't have Eric Kendricks playing with him right now? You got Alex Singleton, who's a feel good story. But much like, you know, Wilson, very one-dimensional. Uh, you know, Alex Singleton, sideline to sideline linebacker. Can tackle well, doesn't miss a lot of tackles. Okay athlete, but can't get off blocks. Can't really drop back into coverage. And that's a uh, recipe for success for a team that just wants to be like, hey, we know what Philly's defense sucks at. We're just going to keep targeting it all game. And the Philly couldn't adjust. They couldn't make adjustments. Javon Hargrave's sick. He's been very good. Two sacks again today. I think Fletcher Cox, like I said, Josh Schwett, all had fairly good games. And the DBs. Just linebacker safety is not good enough. And it's <laughs> there were they were positions that weren't good enough when we came to the season. You know, I, I tweeted a video talking, just re re rehashing my video, actually, when Philadelphia did not select JOK, Jeremiah Wosu koroma in the second round out of Notre Dame, and decided to go with Landon Dickerson. JOK is the highest graded linebacker in the NFL right now through three weeks from PFF. I'm just a guy on the internet. You know what I'm saying? Like, who, you know, who's running? Who's running a team like that on the internet? Clearly, it's Howie Roseman's the the better evaluator talent. Um, so you know, grades is not, not good. It wasn't acceptable performance for Philadelphia. So now we just go to the fallout here. And like, first things first, because I hate Dallas. I don't know necessarily know that this is a win that I would high ass if I'm the Cowboys. Philly sucked really bad. Like we did not play good. And Dallas still couldn't put us away in the first half. Dallas was leaving points out there. There were still the same old sloppy Dallas plays. You still saw Cowboy fans at halftime just like being like, how are we going to lose this game? You're still that Cowboys team. The, the Cowboys remind me of like peak Phillip River Chargers. Like when Phillip Rivers were there, they had uh, Vincent Jackson, LT and all that stuff. They always look good, like look like Tarzan plays like Jane when it matters. And I think that that's, that's still how I feel about Dallas. So that's, that's my little, like, get Dallas out of the way. Because other than that, I mean, they, there's nothing I can defend about Philadelphia. Dallas worked them. 
Uh, Diggs looked really good. That Diggs guy was really good. And uh, that's all I'm going to say about Dallas. Let's reflect on the Eagles. So now we have a we have a head coach. We'll talk about the head coach first, and then we'll talk about Jalen Hurts. So for the head coach, we had Joe Brady in the building. Joe Brady got interviewed, the man that's rejuvenating the career of Sam Darrell, the man that's pulling the triggers on offense for the 3-0 Carolina Panthers, who's had some very good complimentary defensive play. Maybe it's even led by that defense. But we had Joe Brady in the building. And I think if you're truly a team like Philadelphia, likes to be on the cutting edge, likes to be on the front foot, which is what our owner always says, it's kind of you know, his mantra when it comes to building a team. You need a quarterback guy in the like your head coach in today's NFL for the most part. You need the quarterback guy, and I'm not seeing the quarterback guy in Nick Sirianni. I know Joe Brady's a quarterback guy, but I'm looking at Nick Sirianni and I'm looking at Jalen Hurts and I'm seeing no real development from the quarterback that had his moments and his clear deficiencies last season. So. You know, unless the Eagles just knew all along, and, and obviously it's, it's coming kind of more of a reality, especially if we got Kansas City next week. I'm sure that's going to be a fun game. That that Falcons win week one was going to be an earlier this season, but I'm not. I'm, I'm I, the more and more you try to like, we got Nick Sirianni, a guy no one knew this time last year. You have to question whether or not during the hiring process we had good name like Joe Brady. Joe Brady was my guy all along. Like you think Howie Roseman in his head. Like, as he's sitting there doing the interview, sitting back asking all these stupid questions, and Sirianni playing rock, paper, scissors, you think Nick, you know, you think Howie Roseman is like ranking these guys on how easy they're going to be a pushover to go along with Howie Roseman because he's, you know, he's, he's borderline Jerry Jones in terms of like how vocal and how much he wants to be the puppeteer of the Philadelphia Eagles when it really just, you know, you're the suit guy, do the suit things, and then, you know, let the football guys do the football things. And I, I just feel like Nick Sirianni was the coach of least resistance. And that's why you get the job here in Philadelphia. So, there's that. And now you look at Jalen Hurts. You know, for Jalen Hurts. I've said all along, man. And I, I think it kind of epitomizes my feelings on this video and the season. I said this is... I've been an Eagles fan since grade 7. Grade 6 going into grade 7. So, that was a very long time. I think I'm 16, 17 years as an Eagles fan, this is the first year that I've never had any, I didn't have any expectations for my team. I was like looking at like literally my expectations I was hoping for this year was that we'd get a first round pick from the Colts for Carson Wentz. So we'd have three first round picks that our fucking GM can go just waste next year. That's what I was hoping for. And another reason that is like, you know, you see my video, it's, it's one of my most popular videos reacting to the Eagles drafting Jalen Hurts. I don't think he's that guy. I, he's a great guy. Very easy to root for. Because I don't think, and I didn't like the pick, I'm not going to not root for the guy. I was hoping he could develop. I hope he can, you know, surprise everyone and make my Sundays enjoyable. But you're just seeing, he just doesn't have, he's a noodle arm. He can't make throws in the middle of the field. He bails from a clean pocket. He stares down his receivers. I know he's essentially a rookie, but he doesn't look like a good rookie. I'm not seeing the positive challenge. I'm seeing a quarterback that will make the occasional play with his legs when a play breaks. And as long as the team can keep him in structure. That's where he's not going to be good. And you just have to be good at that in the NFL. And he's, he's just not. So it's like, what do you do at the quarterback spot? You look at the draft. Well, you got Malik Willis and Matt Corral at this point. Are like the two quarterbacks that look like they're going to be the bells of the ball. Because Rattlers looks like a write-off. Howell looks like, you know, maybe if strong from Nevada. But ultimately, it's, it's the two quarterbacks. Liberties and Ole Misses. And both those quarterbacks 100% need a Joe Brady type guy. They don't need a Nick Sirianni. They don't need a guy that wants to play rock, paper, scissors. They want to get a guy that's going to be able to show how to fucking develop as a quarterback. And we don't have that in that building. So I don't know if we really want to touch those quarterbacks. Because we don't. We might not be able to maximize it. It could be another situation where a talented quarterback goes to a terrible situation and just is doomed to fail right off the start. So it's like, all right. And this is kind of how I want to end this video. Get it under 10 minutes. It's like... And I'm not going to say his name because there were reports already that came out that he wouldn't waive his trade clause to come to Philadelphia. And I'm not even saying that I want this guy to come to Philadelphia. But a point comes, if you're a Philadelphia Eagle fan, you're trying to probably say, what do we do at quarterback? Being a good person doesn't mean you're a good football player. You know, do you want to win the moral victories or do you want to win victories? I, I kind of, you know, you saw firsthand a team tonight that doesn't give a shit if you're a good guy, like so many people on Dallas are just terrible people off the field or have had terrible pass. No, they just won. It's, it's proof in the pudding for the quarterback dilemma that being a good person, being a great Samaritan, 
being a great boyfriend and all, all everything in between that can come off the field issues in the NFL doesn't equate wins. So think about that when talking about the quarterback spot, I guess. If you want something to think about. I'm not saying anything in either way. I just think, hey, is what it is. See you guys tomorrow. Pink slips.